Exercise 1. In this exercise, we'll retrieve the amount values by using traditional A1 style direct cell references. The posted amount is equal to the value in D31. Enter. Marketing is in D27. Internet expense is D33. And office supplies is D26. Now, Let's see what happens when the source data is sorted. It is currently sorted by account number, but let's sort it by account. Now, let's see what happened to our report. Uh-oh. The postage report formula still retrieves the value in D31, but postage expense no longer resides in D31. It's now in D29. Currently, D31 contains small office equipment, and thus our report is broken. The same thing happened with the other items. Retrieving values with direct cell references is not an effective way for building bulletproof recurring use workbooks. In the next exercise, we'll accomplish this task with lookups. Exercise 2. In this exercise, we'll retrieve the values with the VLOOKUP function. Equals VL and tab to insert the VLOOKUP function. The first argument is the lookup value the account in B14. The next argument is the lookup range, the source data. Since we are going to fill the formula down, we'll lock down the range reference. The next argument is the value to return, which is in the 1, 2, 3rd column. The final argument is false because we are not performing a range lookup. We want to use the exact match logic. Close the paren and hit enter. Looks good. Double click the formula to fill it down and we got it. Now let's sort the source data and see what happens. Again, we sort it by account. We investigate our report values and we note that the values are accurate. The sort did not break our report. This is one of the many benefits of using lookup functions. Exercise 3. In this exercise, we'll use the VLOOKUP function with a named range. We start by selecting the chart of accounts. Next, we assign the name COA. Let's head up to the transactions and write the formulas. Equals VLOOKUP. Let's look up the account number in the range COA. Return the value in the second column. And zero for exact match. Close paren, hit enter. Looks good. Push the formula down, and we're good. Exercise 4. In this exercise, we'll use a skinny row with a lookup function. Start by adding a skinny row under the chart of accounts. Next, name the range, including the skinny row, accounts. Now, we write the formulas. VLOOKUP, look up the account number, comma, from the accounts range, comma, return the value from the second column, and zero for exact match. Fill the formula down, and we got it. Exercise 5. In this exercise, we'll look up values from a table. Start by converting the customer list range to a table. Name the table TBL underscore customers. Now, let's write the formulas. First, the customer name column, VLOOKUP, the customer ID, from the TBL customers table, return the value from the second column, and zero for exact match. It looks good. Push it down, and we got it. We write a similar formula for the customer state column. VLOOKUP, the customer ID, in the customers table, return the value from the third column and zero for exact match. Push it down and we look good. Exercise 6. In this exercise, we'll use a lookup formula to retrieve the user selected department number. The Exercise 6 data sheet stores the department list. To make this list easy to update in future periods, we'll convert it to a table. We'll name the table TBL underscore departments. 
Since data validation doesn't support table names directly, we'll set up a custom name. Select the department num column, assign it the name dd underscore departments. Now let's flip back to the exercise 6 worksheet. Set up data validation on the input cell and allow a list equal to the name dd underscore departments. We can see the in-cell drop-down, and it looks like it's working as expected. Now, we use the VLOOKUP function to retrieve the name for the selected department. Equals VLOOKUP, the selected department number, in the table TBL departments, return the value from the second column, zero for exact match, and we got it. Let's pick a different department number to test it out, and yeah. Looks like it's working as expected. Exercise 7. In this exercise, we'll prepare a balance sheet based on data stored on the data sheet. VLOOKUP the account name from the data sheet. We'll use columns B through C. Return the value from the second column, zero for exact match, and enter. Looks good. Now, just copy and paste it down throughout the report range. This approach is wonderful because we can paste in updated data next period into the data sheet, and our balance sheet values will update accordingly. I love using lookup formulas to build this type of hands-free report. Exercise 8. In this exercise, we'll perform a range lookup to determine the bonus amount. First, Convert the bonus range into a table. Name the table TBL underscore bonus. Next, use data validation for the input cell. Allow a decimal greater than or equal to zero. Now the formula. Look up the sales amount in the bonus table. Return the value from the third column. And true, we are doing a range lookup. Let's enter some values. 15,000 returns 1,000. Good. 111111 returns 5,000. Good. And 234567 is 7250. Perfect. Since the VLOOKUP function performs its match in the first column of the lookup range, it doesn't need the two column. Let's delete it. The bonus amount returned is still correct. 55555 returns 2500, 888888 returns 10,000, and 5 million returns 10,000. Hey, everything looks good. Exercise 9. In this exercise, we'll determine the fiscal quarters for the transactions. Let's convert the lookup range to a table. Name the table TBL underscore quarters. Now the formula equals VLOOKUP. We look up the transaction date in the quarters table, return the value in the second column, and true, we're doing a range lookup. Looks good. Double click to push the formula down, and looks good. Extra credit one. In this exercise, we'll retrieve the marginal tax rate from the table. We look up the taxable income in the TBL tax single table, return the value from the second column, and true, we are performing a range lookup. Let's test it out. 5,000 returns 10% as expected. 10,000 returns 15% as expected. And 100,000 returns 28%. Okay, I think we're good. Extra credit 2. In this exercise, we'll compute the total tax based on the IRS tax table. Overall, we need to apply the marginal tax rate to the income in the highest bracket, then add the cumulative tax of the other brackets. First, we look up the taxable income in the TBL tax table, return the value in the first column, and true, we are doing a range lookup. This leaves us with the amount of income in the highest bracket. 
Next, we look up the marginal tax rate. We look up the income in the tax table, return the value from the 1, 2, 3, 4th column, and true, we are doing a range lookup. That gives us the tax in the highest bracket. Next, we look up the cumulative tax from the previous brackets. We look up the taxable income in the tax table, return the value from the 1, 2, 3rd column, and true, we're doing a range lookup. This allows us to add up the results to determine the total tax. A taxable income of 5,000 returns a tax amount of 500, and we look good. Extra credit 3. In this exercise, we'll look up the adjusted close price. First, we use data validation on the input cell. We allow a date between the begin date and the end date. Next, we look up the date in the TBLGE table, return the value from the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7th column, and true, we are doing a range lookup. If we change the date to 1, 5, 2000, we get 3307 as expected. If we change the date to 1, 9, 2000, we get 3481 as expected. Hey, looks good. Extra credit 4. In this exercise, we'll populate the category column of the transactions table. We VLOOKUP the number of days open. We compute the number of days open by a simple subtraction, the aging date minus the transaction date. The lookup range is the TBL CAT table and return the value from the second column and true we are doing a range lookup. Hit enter. Hey, looks good. Extra credit 5. In this exercise, we'll compute the aging category of each transaction and then create a summary aging report. First, name the input cell date underscore aging. Next, use data validation. Allow a date greater than or equal to 33114. Now, the days open column. This is equal to the aging date minus the transaction date. Enter and looks good. The category column is a lookup. We look up the days open in the TBL age table, return the value in the second column, and true, we are doing a range lookup. Next, let's build the report. We use the SUMIFS function equals sum ifs. We add the amount column from the invoices table and we only include those rows where the category column is equal to the category. Enter and looks good. Push it down and we've got it. This video is a production of Click Consulting.